Russian President Vladimir Putin is on a visit to North Korea, his first in 24 years. Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un agreed to bolster ties between the two countries. North Korea, in fact, says the meeting between the two leaders demonstrated invincibility and durability of friendship and unity. Pyongyang, it's called the country's partnership an engine for accelerating the building of a new multipolar world. On the other hand, the Pentagon, it's voiced concerns about the growing ties between Moscow and Pyongyang. Are we seeing deepening anti-West alignment here? And how will this bolstered partnership between the two nuclear-armed states impact the existing world order? My name is Haim Kaur Saroya and to discuss this, we have with us Dr. Robert Edwin Kelly, American political analyst on inter-Korean affairs and professor in the Department of Political Science, Pusan National University. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond. Hi, thank you for having me. So I want to first understand how does South Korea view this visit and deepening ties between North and Russia? Yeah, I think there's anxiety here in South Korea that the Russians might transfer something of genuine strategic value to North Korea, right? The uh, North Koreans, it, se it, it seems, you know, we don't know, of course, but it seems that the Russians or the North Koreans are transferring a great deal of ammunition to the Russians for their war in Ukraine. It seems that the Russians are pretty desperate to get that right. The, the war has kind of turned into something of a stalemate. And so the, the concern is that uh, the North Koreans might be able to bargain against Russian desperation to get some really significant help on satellites, on missiles, on, uh, on larger strategic assets. And uh, you know, we, we just don't know, right? Of course, the North Koreans aren't going to tell us anything. So there's a lot of, you know, uh, inchoate fear here that, uh, you know, something significant might be uh, in the works, might be shifted to, to North Korea. Right, sir. In fact, I was just going to come to this. Pentagon, of course, sees this as a cause for concern. Do you see this as a sign of growing anti-West alignment? Um, for the, no, not, not so much yet, because I think a, a real sort of axis of sort of like anti-Western dictatorships or something like that, that, that would really, I think, require China's full participation, right? I think right now what you're seeing between North Korea and Russia is kind of a uh, a transactional and alignments of convenience, if you will. That is to say that both Russia and North Korea are significantly isolated from the world economy. They're both now heavily sanctioned. They don't really have a lot of other diplomatic options. So, for example, Russia would very much prefer to have a relationship with South Korea to North Korea. South Korea is 32 times wealthier, I believe, now than North Korea. South Korea can export and import a great deal from Russia. North Korea can't really do any of that. Right. And the Russians going to the North Koreans because that's really, you know, one of the few states left that they can really approach. And so I think what you right now have between the two of them is basically they're both sort of painted into a corner. And so they're kind of working together because it's helpful. I'm not sure that this idea that you actually have the sort of like axis of autocracy coming together to sort of reorganize the world order that would require the, the financial weight of China. Right. To really sort of pay for the, the cost of that, because right now I think Russia and North Korea just are too, they're too weak to do that on their own. All right. Now, just coming back to a point that you'd made earlier as well, NATO says that Russia's war in Ukraine, it was being propped up by North Korea along with China and Iran. Right. Now, North Korea, it's been accused of helping Russia with weapons in its fight against Ukraine. And in exchange of that, Putin says that it will help Kim Jong-un with spy satellite systems. So how do you assess this transactional relationship between the two? Yeah, I think actually for the two of them, it's a pretty great relationship. I mean, you know, for the rest of the world, you know, for us on the outside, I think it's pretty, pretty bad. But I think the two partners are getting actually a lot valuable out of it, right? I don't think that's why this is this thing, this relationship has bloomed so, so rapidly because there are really good, um, uh, there are really good upsides for both. You know, it's pretty clear. For in the, so in Ukraine, for example, I think this is where it's most obvious. In the Ukraine war, it's pretty clear that the Russian defense industrial base cannot keep up with Russia's battlefield losses. We know the Russians are starting to use equipment from the 1970s, even the 1960s in the war, right? They just don't have enough ammunition stocks to meet their needs, right? And we also know that North Korea has a Soviet style military industrial complex that goes back decades. They've got huge stockpiles and they're selling those directly to the Russians. So for the Russians, this is really great because you're able to get shells really, really fast for the war, right? On the other hand, North Korea has real problems with missile launches and technology for reasons that are you know, fairly obvious. North Korea's you know, economically backward, its scientific industrial complex is, is fairly narrow outside of the, the nuclear space. And so if you can get stuff from the Russians for free, right, if you can sort of bargain 
these shells to get uh, Russian missile technology, telemetric data, right? It's a pretty useful exchange, right? And I think the real question, the big question is how desperate is Putin? If he's really, really desperate for all these shells and he'll be willing to give away more and more information to the North Koreans. And that's what we really don't know on the outside. Just how much are the North Koreans going to be able to pull out of Putin in, uh, because Putin's so desperate for these shells to win the war to prosecute his, his Ukraine war? All right. Well, uh, Dr. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond with your insights on this. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for having me. For latest news, download the Beyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.